I grew up close to the coast, so throughout my life, I've always been happiest when I'm by the sea. For me, Britain's coastline is like no other in the world. Over 6,000 miles of majestic beauty and epic ruggedness. For thousands of years, people have made these vibrant shores their home. Whether it's family starting a brand new life next to the sea. Oh my word, I'm impressed. Or those who've spent generations maintaining the traditions and culture of the coast. Can you see yourself doing anything else? No. <laughs> So what is it about the British shoreline that makes us feel so fulfilled and content? And just how do families make a livelihood here? Over the next few weeks... I'll be venturing to the very edges of Great Britain. ..to discover some of the extraordinary lives and homes of the people who have followed their hearts... ..to live the coastal dream. With 125 miles of rugged and dramatic coastline, Anglesey is the biggest island in Wales. Found at the northwest tip of the Principality, it's known as Monman Cymru, or the Mother of Wales, and was once thought of as the nation's food basket, due to its fertile land. In the shadows of Snowdonia National Park, this island is home to around 70,000 people and a stronghold of the Welsh language. This visit is a journey of discovery for me. You know what? I have never been to Anglesey before. But I really like the feeling of discovering a stretch of coastline for the very first time. It does not bring out the kid in you. Today, I'll be meeting the families who have moved here and made this island their home. Don't tell me that's your gap in the that's distance it. there. Are you kidding me? Discovering what drew them here, from the isolated beaches to the wild Irish sea. I love it. <laughs> As they show me the island they fell in love with. To be out here on an evening like this, you know, it just sums it up for me. It's just so spectacularly beautiful and simple. There are two 19th century bridges that connect Anglesey to the Welsh mainland. Britannia Bridge, a Robert Stevenson construction, and the Thomas Telford built Menai Suspension Bridge. Both straddle the fast-flowing waters of the Menai Straits. Beneath this calm and serene surface, there are really treacherous and hazardous currents. However, it has not stopped one man and his family from making themselves at home there. Slap bang in the middle of these dangerous waters is Fish Trap Island. Used to catch fish as far back as the 16th century, and with its own cottage and smokehouse, it's home to Wirral-born Peter Betts, who has owned it for the last 25 years. And Peter's son, Tom, is going to take me there. Pleasure to meet you, mate. Yeah, nice to meet you. But first, he's going to navigate the perilous Menai Straits during high tide to take me on a tour of the waters that drew his dad here. We've got Nelson's column just ahead. There were a lot of people from Anglesey who were involved in Trafalgar. Nelson's right-hand man, he became the Marquis of Anglesey. And this was just a tribute to Nelson. A lot of his shipmates trained on the Menai Straits because he said, if you can sail the Menai Straits, you can sail anywhere in the world. Am I right in thinking in front of us here are the famous swellies? Yeah, that's the one. So the swellies are the stretch of water between the two bridges. What causes the rapids and the whirlpools? It's just the sheer volume of water coming through this stretch because it's quite narrow and all the whirlpools and the rocks just make all the water churn and just create all the swells and makes it quite interesting to drive the boat through. Because yeah. I guess it's pretty dangerous here, eh? Yeah, there's a few boats and uh, we see from the island who get into a bit of trouble. Do I take it this is Millionaire's Row? That's the one, yeah. Quite a few nice houses along this little stretch. A lot of nice houses, isn't that? Mm. With the swellies successfully navigated, our next stop is Unis Gorid Goch, translated as the Red Weir, but known locally as Fish Trap Island. 
Don't tell me that's your gaff in the that's distance it. there. Is that the island? Yeah, that's the island. Are you kidding me? Will you look at that? That's absolutely stunning. Nestled 200 metres offshore and just half a mile in length, Fish Trap Island gets its name from the two man-made weirs perfectly positioned to catch the passing white bait. Buying the island was a lifelong dream for Peter. Ahoy, Skipper! How you doing? Peter Betts. Robson, good to meet you. Hey, you too, buddy. How did you end up living here? As a little boy, I've always fished in the Menai and I've always loved the island and I always wondered who lived there. Really? And one day it came for sale and we managed to be lucky enough to buy it. So you're going to show me around? Yeah. Come on, then. Well, I'll let follow you follow me. The way. After buying the island at auction, property developer Peter began the arduous task of renovating the buildings, which had fallen into a state of disrepair. You've really kept its character, haven't you? Well, this particular room is the Bishop's Parlour. It was built in 1715 for the Bishop of Bangor, and he used to come here and write his sermons, so they say. And he even carved his name on the, the stone outside. 1715. You've obviously done a lot of work. We've done a lot of work. When, yeah. when we came here, it was derelict. Really? And it had been left and it was falling apart and the roof was half missing. So this was a, a good challenge. It seems you've just looked at it and understood its character and you've really kind of taken care of that aspect of, it, of its history. You've really kept that well, alive. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you think that. If you, if you like it, that sign, please. Today, the island retains a working weir, which means an opportunity to catch some lunch. This is the fish trap. This is the fish trap. So there's our quarry. Literally thousands and thousands of white bait. What is it that causes the fish to be cornered? They're cornered by the, the, the large wall. It's 80 metres long, 5 metres high and 3 metres thick. They get swept in at this end and they all get caught in here. And when the tide drops, there they are. It used to be called Whitebait Island because in the 20s there, there was a, a bell on the shore and people would come down and ring the bell and the old man who lived here would row across and bring them back and they had white bait teas for a shilling. Are you kidding? <laughs> and that's what they did for a long, long time. Now, as you know, many methods of catching fish use the fly or lures, but one of the most efficient <laughs> and childlike is the net. So I'm going to drive them to you okay. and you net them. I'm so excited! If we don't catch any, we're going to look pretty stupid. Really? Go, you go. There you go. Oh. <laughs> and there I have a net, as does Peter, of silver treasure. Absolutely perfect. And I have nice to nice say, nice. I love white bait, but I've never had it this fresh. We'll deep fry them, and they will be beautiful. Perfect. Good catch. <laughs> People have been trapping fish on this island for over 400 years. Well, you won't get fresher than this, Robson. And now it's time for a sample of fresh Welsh white bait straight out of the sea. See, perfect. If you're going to eat seafood, make sure it's fresh. Question, best seafood restaurant in Anglesey? You here? Right here. On this island, with that view, this extraordinary property. Do you feel blessed? I feel very lucky. We're lucky to have it. Could you see yourself ever selling this place? Well, I hope not. <laughs> I think I'd be in big trouble with my family if I did. Fish Trap Island is just one of the places with an incredible history that defines Anglesey's coastline. I'm continuing my journey of discovery on foot via Anglesey's coastal path. It's a 125-mile trail that circumnavigates the island's margins and stops at 20 towns and villages en route, including the town of Menai Bridge, the fifth largest town on Anglesey, with a population of just under 4,000. A stone's throw from the coastal path is another home full of history, where I'm meeting a couple who promised to take me to one of their favourite hidden spots on the island. Hello there. <sighs> the I know, going. it's tough going. <laughs> Robson. Robson. Lovely to meet you. You too, Trish. Trish. Nice to meet you. Simon. Hello, Robson. Robson, good to see you. Welcome to Bruno. And... Yeah, it's beautiful, Thank extraordinary. You. Full Thank of character. It's a house packed with history. Built in the 18th century, just after the completion of the Menai Bridge, it was owned by the Marcus of Anglesey until 1928. And it's a house that's persuaded local girl Trice to return to the island she grew up on. So when you guys 
wife decided to move here, mm -hmm. what was the most important consideration? Was it the building or was it that spectacular view there? It was the house for me initially. Right. And then, of course, once you see where the house is, there's no competing with a view like that. And the situation that we have where we're in a lovely little town next to the sea. We just fell in love with it, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And it's down to the sea we're heading, 14 miles up the coastal path to Aberfrau. You can literally walk the whole of this island. I've heard it's one of the best in Britain. It is. Should catch a sunset as well. You never know. We're heading on a five-mile walk across open fields by a trite mower, translated as simply Big Beach, to the place closest to Teresa and Simon's hearts. So am I right in saying you were brought up in Aberfrau? Yes, absolutely. I left when I was 18 to mm -hmm. go off to uni. But before that, I spent my whole time here. It was a great place to grow up. I mean, you couldn't get any closer to the sea, could you? And was it a case of you left a place you really liked to broaden your horizons, but you kind of always knew you were going to come back? Well, I didn't always know I'd come back, but I always was very conscious of my roots. And anybody that ever met me when I lived in England would always know that I was from Anglesey. Can you guys see yourself moving elsewhere after this? I don't think so. I think this could be the final place. I mean, it's quite interesting that we were actually married as well in that village. Oh, really? It's sort of gone full circle. We've met in Manchester and lived all around the country, and then finally we've come back here. Just over there, you've got the Clean Peninsula, which we've actually walked up those mountains over there, but it runs all the way down to Bardsey Island, right in the distance there. And before the sun sinks below the Irish Sea, we reach our destination. Oh, my goodness, how beautiful is that? Built in the 12th century, St. Coven's Church was once connected to the mainland until sea erosion turned it into a tidal island. So what's the story with this church over here? We used to go as children once a year and we used to walk down the lane from the village of Aberfrau. Services defined by the tide. Oh, yeah, definitely, <laughs> because you could be stranded there. I have to say, that was a lovely walk. Thank mm. you. have seen so much. We've enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been great. What's the best part of living in this part of the world? It's a vibrant community. Lots going on. Strong Welsh culture and uh, appreciation of our history and the language and the music and everything, which is, just makes up the whole environment, really, that we're in. So do you guys feel settled now? I'm definitely settled. It's taken some time to get used to it. This is different, but in so many good ways. But living by the coast, was that a really important part of the decision to, to settle here? Very much so. The sea just adds something particularly special to a location. And to be out here on an evening like this, in this light, you know, it just sums it up for me. It's just so spectacularly beautiful and simple. I can certainly see what pulled trees back to this wonderful island. What about the couple who've chosen Anglesey's cliff edge for their retirement? I wonder what drew you to this location. <laughs> or the city girl who fell in love with the sea. Well, I used to wear heels <laughs> and skirts, and look at me now. I'm on Anglesey, an island off the northwest coast of Wales, meeting the people who've set up new lives here in a microclimate sheltered from the showers of Snowdonia. I've been exploring the island along its coastal path and reached the former fishing village of Moilvra, a place with just 502 households, and one of them is literally teetering on a cliff edge. Hello, sir. Hello. Nice to see you, Colin. Wow. Will you look at that? Irish-born Miriam Scanlon and her partner Colin Jennings have spent the last two years turning this 19th century holiday cottage into a home they can retire to. I wonder what drew you to this location? Something uh, called it, the sea. Yeah. <laughs> Why here specifically? It reminds me of Ireland. Really? Yes. Wow. 
the intention was always to be a, a home eventually. Why are you now wanting to live here and make it your um, own? We're getting older, <laughs> closer to retirement. Daughter's going off to university. So it's one of those life-changing periods, I suppose. So what was this place like before you moved into it? Uh, we bought it from a lady who'd lived here for many years. So it needed a complete makeover. It was a working home, small windows to the sea, nothing to exploit the view at all. Wow. I learned a lot about erosion at school. Does that ever worry you? <laughs> Uh, no, this house, the original house is here since 1850. Mm. The thing that was the big challenge was the sea and this amount of glass, because waves do come up on occasions. It's only a couple of days a year, but it can be interesting. It has been known to go over the house, the water. Wow. But we're not worried from that point of view. All right, well, I love this room. Are you going to give me the tour? Yes. Uh, this you, way. Man. Thank you. Colin and Miriam originally spied the place for sale while on holiday in Moilborough with friends and instantly fell in love with its location, right on the coastal path. You must have been over the moon when you came into here when it was finished. Yes, yeah? yes. The first night I didn't even close the blinds and the moon was out. I just went to bed with the blinds open. And on a clear night, stars, oh, beautiful. Eh? Fantastic. Miriam now lives here full-time, while Colin still works during the week in Manchester. She might be able to see him on a clear day from her patio. That looks out east. So, do you feel all that hard work's paid off, Miriam and Colin? Well, I think I, when you stand here with a cup of coffee and look back, I think, it's ha I think it's very much so. We've got there in the end. It's not hard to see why Anglesey attracts more than a million tourists every year. I'm jumping off the coastal path and back in my car to travel 17 miles to Newborough, on the other side of Anglesey, for one last look at this captivating island. Sean Sykes' love of the sea led to her trading in the bustle of London city life to forge a new living in stand-up paddleboarding. She moved to this traditional farmhouse near the coast three years ago. Sean. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. What a beautiful place. Welcome. Did you have a nice view of Snowdon? Yeah, it was over? absolutely stunning. Paddle boarding, never yes. done it before. You'll be fine. I'm excited. You'll be fine. So what we're going to do is head to one of my favourite beaches here on Anglesey. It's Newborough. It's about a ten minute drive. You'll love it. Can't wait. Brilliant. Let's Should go. go. Yep. Newborough is a blue flag beach which stretches out for a mile and a half, overlooked by the formidable Snowdonian Mountains. It is a beautiful part of the world. Are you Anglesey born and bred? No, actually I wasn't. I was born in a beautiful part of North Wales, Langoshlin, mm -hmm. and I went away to university in England, worked in Manchester and London, and my parents actually retired to Anglesey. And when I decided to change career, I wanted a slower pace of life and move home. Is that what it was? You wanted a slower pace yeah. of life? I'd done advertising for 16 years, 18 hour days, and everything was about deadlines, deadlines, fast pace, and I just wanted to reconnect with the sea and be closer to the mountains. So before we hit the sea, it's safety first with Sean, and apparently that means a warm-up. So you have to go back to back. Uh -huh. You've got the bum bag in the way. Woo! So we're going to pass the paddle round, OK? So we're rotating round. Oh, I get you. Don't hit me on the head with the paddle. Swap direction. Oh, Ooh, that confused you, didn't it? Do you feel like a warrior? Do I look like one? How's my hair look? Just make me look good. Look I need the publicity. Beautiful. I'm excited. Yeah. Good. I'm excited is an excitable thing that gets excited when it's excitable. Brilliant! Come on. Yeah! Warm-up's done. Hello. It's time to hit the Irish Sea. And it doesn't take me long to understand why this is such an enticing way to see the coast. Well, it seems I've mastered the stand-up part of stand-up paddleboarding. Oh, 
maybe not. Okay. One minor stumble later, and I'm back enjoying all Anglesey's coast has to offer. I'm just thinking of all the modes of transport, why you choose a paddleboard? It's so accessible, because you can have it on the sea, the canal, and there's not much faff, is there? You literally jump on it, and away you go. I'm hooked. You're hooked. I love it. Woohoo! Isn't that difficult? No. Well, you managed to get standing quite quickly. I did, and then so, I fell in, but then I got standing again. Good day. Well done. Good day. How's your life changed since coming back to Anglesey from your hectic, hyper-connected life in London? Well, I used to wear heels <laughs> and skirts. And look at me now, neoprene, <laughs> leggings. My life has completely changed. It's slowed down. Obviously, the money is a lot less, but my quality of life is so much better. It's fantastic. Love today. High five. Yeah. It's the end of my time on Anglesey. And as someone who's never been here before, it's been incredible meeting all these people making this beautiful part of the world work for them. Peter on Fish Trap Island, that extraordinary stretch of the coastal path. Sean on the paddle boards. It's lovely. It might have been my first time here, but I'm sure it won't be my last. Join me next week as my coastal adventure continues to Cornwall to meet a couple who've sunk everything into building their dream home by the sea. Knowing now what we've encountered along the way, I'm not sure whether we would have done it or not. OK, you ready? Ready to run, Robson? Yeah. A husband and wife who make a living taking to the skies over the Cornish coast. And I jump into the deep end with the RNLI. There's something you don't do every day. Tomorrow night at 9, the Doctor with the blunt bedside manner is back with a new series of Doc Martin. Coming up here on ITV, they're called in when things get really dirty. Meet the extreme cleaners that care. New documentary, Call the Cleaners, is next.